bonds will obviously be tested on the exam. And the key is to get off to a good start and understand the basics. So why issue bonds? Well, companies sell bonds for one reason, to raise cash. And they can use that cash to expand, to grow. That's the good news. The bad news is they must pay back the investor who purchased the bonds, and they must pay interest to the investor for borrowing the investor's money. And the bonds are going to be long-term liabilities on the balance sheet called bonds payable. And there'll also be interest expense on the income statement. The terminology is key. So we have par value or face value. That's the amount the issuer agrees to repay the bondholder at maturity. For example, if a company issues a bond with a par value of $1,000, it means that $1,000 is the face value. That's the amount that must be repaid to the bondholder when the bond matures, regardless of whether the bond was issued for par or issued for a different amount. So the par value or face value, usually $1,000 for every bond, and that means that's the amount that the investor will get paid back when the bond matures. Now, the coupon rate of interest, also called the stated interest rate, that rate determines how much cash interest the issuer must pay. For example, a bond with a 5% coupon rate and a par value of $1,000, that bond's going to pay $50 annually in interest to the bond holder. We multiply the coupon rate of 5% times the $1,000 par, and that's the amount of cash interest that the issuer must pay because it's determined by the coupon rate or the stated rate, sometimes also known as the nominal rate. All three of those terms mean the same thing, and they really serve only one purpose, and that's to determine how much cash the investors will get paid each year in interest. And how do we determine that? It's the annual coupon rate given here at 5% times the $1,000 par, which equals $50 of interest that has to be paid in cash to the bondholder each year based on the coupon or stated rate. Now, what about the market rate or yield? reflects the true percentage cost of the borrowing for the issuer. And this market rate is not known until the day the bonds are issued. The market rate will determine if the bonds sell at 100% of par, $1,000, or maybe below par, 98% of par, $980 per bond, or maybe the bonds will sell above par at 101% of par at 1,010. So the market rate or yield, another term for it, is the effective rate of interest all means the same thing. It's the true percentage cost of the borrowing for the company who's issuing the bonds. All right, let's look at an example. The Hertz Corp is issuing a $1,000 bond due in five years. If the stated rate is 5%, but the market rate is 6%, well, the 5% stated rate then is at a discount to the 6% market rate. And the result is that the bonds will sell at a discount below $1,000 par. Maybe the bonds will sell at 800 instead of 1,000. And if the bonds sell at 800 instead of 1,000, then the true percentage cost of borrowing would be 6% instead of 5%. Because the company's only taking in $800 and they have to pay interest on all $1,000. Now, why did these bonds sell at a discount? Because the stated rate of interest on these bonds is 5%, but they showed up to the bond market on the day the bonds were issued and the bond market was 6% for similar bonds. So that means the 5% stated rate is at a discount to the market rate that day, and that's why the bonds sold below par. So anytime the stated rate is below the market rate, the bonds will sell at a discount. So although the stated rate's 5% here, what's the true percentage cost of this borrowing? 6%. Now let's change it around. If the stated rate is still 5%, but now the market rate's only 4%. Now the 5% stated rate is at a premium to the bond market rate of 4%. So now the bonds will sell at a premium above $1,000 par. Maybe the bonds will sell at $1,200. And if the bonds sell at a premium above par, it's only because this bond is paying a 5% interest rate and shows up to the bond market to issue it and the market rate for similar bonds that day is only 4%. So that means this bond is at a premium to the market rate of interest. So this bond will sell above par. So even though the stated rate's 5%, the true effective cost of borrowing will only be 4%.
Why? Because the company is going to collect $1,200 and only have to pay interest based on a $1,000 par. So remember, the market rate of interest is not known in advance. The stated rate is. We know it's a 5% bond. We know how much cash interest is going to be paid. The cash interest will be 5% times a $1,000 par, whether the bond sells at a discount, a premium, or for par. The cash interest will be 5% times a $1,000 par, no matter what. However, the effective cost of borrowing is not going to be 5% unless the stated rate and the market rate are both 5%. Let's try this. Another term for the market rate of interest, which reflects the true percentage cost of borrowing for the issuer of bonds, is the what? What's another term for the market rate of interest? Is it the coupon rate? No. The stated rate? No. The nominal rate? No. The effective rate, yes. Letter D is correct. The market rate of interest is also known as the effective rate, also known as the yield. That reflects the true percentage cost of borrowing for the issuer and the true percentage return for the investor. This market or effective rate often differs from the coupon or stated rate. And remember, the market rate is not known until the day the bonds are issued. As for the wrong choices, the coupon rate, stated rate, nominal rate, they're all synonymous with one another and they impact only the cash amount of interest that the issuer must pay to the bondholders. So this question asked another term for the market rate of interest, which reflects the true percentage cost of borrowing for the issuer of bonds. And the answer is D, the effective rate, also known as the yield. So D is correct. And make a note that the yield is also another term for the effective rate or market rate. How about this? When the market rate is 8%, Hertz Corp issues a $1,000 par value, 10% bond due in five years. Which of the following determines the exact amount of cash that Hertz Corp must pay to the bondholders? Is it the market rate? Is it the stated rate? Both or neither? So there's two rates given. Market rate's 8%, stated rate, 10%. Which one determines the cash that Hertz Corp, the issuer of the bonds, has to pay to the bondholders? And the answer is B, the stated rate. The stated rate or coupon rate determines the exact amount of cash the issuer, Hertz Corp, must pay to the investors, the bondholders. To determine this annual amount of cash, the stated rate of 10% is multiplied by the $1,000 par or face value, and the issuer, Hertz Corp, owes $100 per year to the bondholders until maturity of the bonds, regardless of what the market rate is. The market rate affects the bond selling price, whether the bond will sell at a premium, 102% a par, or at a discount, maybe 98% a par, or at par, but the market rate does not impact the amount of the cash interest payment, which is fixed based on the stated rate. So the question asked, which of the following determines the exact amount of cash that the Hertz Court must pay to bondholders? And the answer is B, the stated rate. Now, what else can you tell me about this same set of facts? The market rate's 8%, the stated rate's 10. So when Hertz Court brings their 10% bond to the market and finds out that the bond market's only paying 8%, for bonds of a similar grade and quality, is Hertz Corp going to sell this bond for above par or below par? We have the stated rate at a premium to the market rate. Stated rate's 10%. It's at a premium to the market rate, which is 8%. This bond's going to sell at a premium. This bond will sell at a premium because the stated rate of 10% is at a premium to the market rate on the day the bonds are issued. So Hertz Corp is going to pay cash interest to the bondholders based on the 10% stated rate, but their true percentage cost of borrowing is going to be 8% because these bonds are going to sell at a premium. How about this one? An issuer of bonds pays interest to bondholders based on the blank rate of interest, but determines the true percentage cost of borrowing based on the what rate of interest? And we have market rate, stated rate. So which one says it best? Letter B, the issuer pays interest to bondholders based on the stated rate of interest, also known as the coupon rate. However, the true percentage cost of borrowing is determined based on the market rate. All right, if a bond has a coupon rate of 6%, the market rate is 7 and the par value is $1,000, how much cash interest must be paid every six months if the bonds pay interest semi-annually instead of annually? All right, the first thing I would do here is determine annual interest obligation for the issuer, and we use the stated or coupon rate for that. So the coupon rate of 6% times the $1,000 par 
that means $60 every year has to be paid in interest. But if we're going to pay that interest semi-annually, then it's $30 every six months. And that's choice A. And you have to know that it's the coupon rate times the par value that determines the cash amount of interest. And then just divide by two since interest is paid semi-annually. See, whenever you see an interest rate quoted, it's always quoted on an annual basis. So if you see the coupon rate 6%, that means 6% a year. So to get annual interest, you just multiply 6% times $1,000 face, $60 per year is the interest each year. And then since it's a semi-annual interest payment, every six months, they have to pay $30. And this question asked, how much cash interest must be paid every six months if the bonds pay interest semi-annually? And the answer is 6% coupon times $1,000 par gives you $60 of interest for the whole year, divide by two, and $30 cash has to be paid to bondholders every six months. Letter A is correct. All right, same facts. If a bond has a coupon rate of 6%, the market rate is 7%, and the par value is $1,000, which of the following is correct? A says the bond will sell at a premium. That means above par. B says the bond will sell at a face value. That means for even par, $1,000. C, the bond will sell at a discount below 1000 Or D, the bonds will pay interest annually rather than semi-annually since the market rate and the stated rate are not the same. And the answer is C, the bond will sell at a discount. Why? Because the bond's coupon rate, the stated rate, 6%, is at a discount on the day the bonds are issued to the market rate, which is 7% that day. Therefore, the bonds will sell at a discount below par, less than 100% of par. It's the market rate that determines whether the bonds sell at a discount or a premium. And when that coupon rate shows up to the market at a discount to the market rate, the bond will sell at a discount. Now, D, look at D. Whether the bonds pay interest annually or semi-annually, that's determined in advance. And that has nothing to do with the market rate versus the stated rate. Remember, the market rate is not known until the moment the bonds are issued whereas the stated rate is known in advance, and so is the interest payment dates. Whether it's a semi-annual interest payment twice a year or an annual interest payment once a year, that's known well in advance. And this question asked if a bond has a coupon rate of 6% and the market rate is 7% and the par is 1,000, which of the following is correct? And the answer is the bond will sell at a discount. Letter C is correct. How about this? Caleb Inc. issues bonds with a stated rate of 5%. If the market rate for comparable bonds is 6% that day, which of the following is correct? Is it A, Caleb will collect a premium? B, Caleb will have to sell the bonds at a discount? C, Caleb will sell the bonds at face value? Or D, none of the above? And the answer is B, Caleb will have to sell the bonds at a discount. Why? Since on the day the bonds are issued, the stated rate, 5%, is at a discount to the market rate of 6%, that means the bonds will sell at a discount below par. This is because anyone who issues comparable bonds in this 6% market will incur a 6% effective rate. Now, Caleb Corp's 5% bond will be issued at a discount in the 6% market, resulting in Caleb collecting less than $1,000 for the bond. Maybe $970 will be collected by Caleb and collecting less proceeds will serve to increase Caleb's true cost of borrowing from 5% up to 6%. And this question asked, Caleb issues bonds with a stated rate of 5%. If the market rate is 6%, which of the following is correct? And the answer is B, Caleb will have to sell the bonds at a discount. And that's because the stated rate is at a discount to the market rate. Let's try this. Ball Corp issues bonds with a stated rate of 7%. If the market rate for comparable bonds is 5%, which of the following is correct? A says Ball Corp will have to sell the bonds at a discount. B says Ball Corp will sell the bonds at face value or par. C says Ball Corp will collect the premium. Or is it D, none of the above? Think you know? Leave me the answer in the comments section. And remember to like and subscribe so you'll always know when a new I-75 video drops. And if you need more help with bonds or any part of the CPA FAR exam, Go to i75cpareview.com and get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference. Hey, it's Darius. Scores are out, and congratulations to those who passed the CPA exam. 
and thanks for noticing the I-75 difference. So if you're struggling with TCP or REG or any of the CPA exams, look at this. I watched pretty much all the I-75 lectures and did not do practice questions. You can do some practice questions. It's okay. You got my permission. I-75 has thousands of practice questions. So if you didn't pass, don't get mad. Get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference.